It's coming soon, the hilarious Liar Liar starring the man who is obsessed with Hunter Biden's hard drive. The Deep State talking sheer shantanity on Fox Entertainment. He lives to push his head right off the backside of former guy. Jim Jordan's past takes him down a corridor of lie, lie, lie. Coming soon, a movie with zero stars. Try and miss it. Gentlemen and gentlemen from New York is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman Cole, Ranking Member McGovern, thank you for the opportunity to testify today. Unfortunately, it appears my Republican colleagues are out of ideas. Two weeks ago, I was here for a pointless, non-binding resolution that did nothing to improve the situation at the border. This week, it is for multiple bills that are largely duplicative of current law and amount to little more than desperate attempts to score political points by scapegoating and fear-mongering about immigrants. Nor do these bills have much connection with the situation at the border. None of these bills stand any chance of becoming law, nor would they improve our immigration system or make Americans safer. It is long past time for House Republicans to engage in bipartisan discussions to address our broken immigration system. But as Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell laid bare just last week, too many Republicans, led by Donald Trump, want the issue of immigration more than they want to find meaningful solutions. That is the context in which we find ourselves in the Rules Committee today. But while I'm here, let's go through each of these bills. I'll start with H.R. 5585, the Agent Raul Gonzalez Officer Safety Act. This legislation makes it a crime to flee Border Patrol while operating a vehicle and includes an unnecessary mandatory minimum sentence that runs counter to the bipartisan progress that we have made on criminal justice reform in recent years. While this conduct is largely covered by another criminal statute, which makes it a crime to evade a Border Patrol checkpoint, this legislation also adds significant immigration consequences. Under this bill, the crime of fleeing Border Patrol becomes an inadmissibility and deportability offense. But just as the new crimes in this bill are largely covered by current law, evading or fleeing law enforcement is already an, admit an inadmissibility and deportability offense. Where this bill makes a significant change is by not requiring that an individual be convicted of the crime to render them deportable. Doesn't have to be convicted of the crime. While there are exceptions, the majority of the deportability grounds in current law require a conviction. That is because we are dealing with those who are already here and came here lawfully and have often lived in the United States for a long time. We're not talking about illegal immigrants. Remember that someone who is here unlawfully is already removable. Therefore, we are talking about lawful permanent residents, people who have put down roots in our communities, many of whom have US citizens, spouses, and children, and who have truly established themselves here in the United States. By not requiring a conviction before making someone deportable, this bill flies in the face of due process. We have the same issue when it comes to H.R. 6678, the Consequences for Social Security Fraud Act. Convictions for Social Security fraud are largely captured by our current laws. Fraud-related crimes are considered crimes involving moral turpitude, commonly called a CMT. And convictions involving falsely making, forging, counterfeiting, or altering a document that can be used as evidence of authorized stay or employment in the United States is specifically defined as an aggravated felony. A conviction for any of these already makes someone deportable. Unfortunately, the majority once again decides not to require a conviction for people to be deported, and once again places their desire to attack and demonize immigrants before any concern for due process. Then we have H.R. 6976, the Protect Communities from DUIs Act. At least for this bill, the majority requires a conviction to deport a green card holder. Driving under the influence or DUI is, of course, a serious issue. No one wants to see individuals who are true th threats to public safety eligible for immigration benefits. However, serious DUI convictions already make an, in an individual inadmissible and deportable under current law. DUI, where the maximum penal possible penalty is a year or more, and where there, there is serious bodily harm, hit and runs, aggravated DUI, driving with knowledge of an invalid suspended or revoked license, are already CIMTs. But this bill goes much further. It does not take into account the DUI statutes across our country are broad and varied. Some states allow DUI prosecutions of individuals who are asleep, inebriated in their car, 
even if their car was parked in their own driveway. And this is not hypothetical. We know this to be the case because people have actually been prosecuted and convicted for DUI for these minor infractions. This issue and other problems with these bills could have been addressed by amendments that Democrats offered during our markup, but each was rejected on a party line vote. The last bill, H.R. 6679, the No Immigration Benefits for Hamas Terrorist Acts, is very personal to me. On October 7th, Hamas committed a horrific attack, assault on innocent civilians in Israel, murdering 1,200 people, including 32 Americans killing the most Jewish people in a single day since the Holocaust. Even today, over 110 days later, Hamas continues to hold innocent men, women, and children in captivity. Not a day goes by that I don't think of the hostages and the horrors they continue to endure. Too many lives have been shattered by this attack and the war that followed on both sides of the conflict. This bill has a goal that I strongly support, to ensure that no one involved with the planning or commission of the October 7th attacks can enter the United States or receive any immigration benefit. It is not clear what its purpose is, however, since such individuals are already barred from entry and cannot receive any immigration status. Hamas has been listed as a terrorist organization by the State Department since 1997, and our immigration laws are very broad, saying that the United States merely needs, quote, reason to believe, close quote, that any non-citizen has engaged in terrorist activity, provided material support to terrorists, or is a member or representative of a terrorist organization, or a group that endorses or espouses terrorist activity to be inadmissible to the country. The breadth of this provision is so extensive, it has been used to bar someone from accessing asylum who was forced to cook and clean for a guerrilla group. As such, this bill is largely redundant to current law. Even the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office determined it would have little to no impact because of the breadth of existing law. We asked the majority to work with us to ensure that this legislation had no unintended consequences and to format this legislation as we normally do as visa sanctions legislation. But unfortunately, this request was ignored. For decades, the Judiciary Committee and the Congress have used visa sanctions to target specific individuals engaged in specific events. However, the majority here has chosen a different path and directly amends the Immigration and Nationality Act, something we did not even do after September 11th when we wanted to target al-Qaeda. I will still support this bill, but I worry that the majority's inability to work with us will doom its chances to become law, making it another meaningless vote. I'm disappointed that they would take this important issue and turn it into a partisan political football. Unfortunately, that seems to be the standard operating procedure under this Republican majority. Thank you for the opportunity to testify, and look forward to the committee's questions. Member, Mr. McGovern, to make, make any remarks he wishes to make. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for beginning this hearing by recognizing uh, the three American service uh, men who lost their lives in, in Jordan, and we pray for their families, um, and we also pray for those who have been wounded in that attack. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we've been hearing for months that Republicans care about border security. Bills every other week about the border. None of them ever become law. Press conferences and visits to the border amounting to nothing. Speeches and lectures about the border, all for show. Claims that Democrats don't care about border security, which is categorically false. But today I'm genuinely shocked because the Senate, at the urging of President Biden and in a bipartisan way, is working on an immigration bill to address border security. From what I hear, it's a tough bill, a bill that has things in it that uh, I think might cause me a lot of angst. Uh, I'm not sure once I see the text uh, if this is even something I can support. And what Republicans are saying, and let me get this right, is that they don't care about what gets negotiated. They're against it no matter what. And not because they don't like what's in the bill. They're against it because Donald Trump who they're all afraid of, told them they have to be against it. Trump wants to demagogue the border, to use it as a campaign issue, and to scare people by demonizing immigrants and peddling fear and hate. So our side will keep an open mind until these negotiations wrap up, but please spare us the outrage and indignation. The truth is out there for everybody to see. Republicans want inaction at the border because they want to make this a campaign issue for Trump. Trump 
the guy who said he would build a wall and Mexico would pay for it. Remember that guy? Remember that? Never even finished his stupid wall, by the way. And instead, it was the American taxpayer who paid for what little of it was built. This is why people hate Washington. It's all theatrics for my friends on the other side. It's all for show. All so they can go on Fox News and blame President Biden for the border problems that they refuse to fix. Republicans wanted to cut customs and border protection personnel. They rejected President Biden's request for $106 billion for border security. And then they voted against funding for border security. And now they're against a border security deal before they even know what's in it. A deal, by the way, that conservative Republican senators say would be the toughest, strongest border security bill in a generation. Unless, I mean, maybe did I miss something? Is Tom Tillis a liberal Democrat now? Senator Tillis, who has been working on this deal, called out House Republicans. He said, and I quote, don't pretend that this policy isn't strong. If you want to admit you're afraid to tell Trump the truth, that's fine. But for you to take a look at this framework and say it's, it's a half measure, you're not paying attention or you're not telling the truth, end quote. And what about Senator Langford? Is he a Democrat now? He said just yesterday on Face the Nation that you all, meaning House Republicans, and I quote, actually don't want to change in law because it's a presidential election year, end quote. Since you're all so scared of Trump, let me quote the leader of our party, President Joe Biden, quote, what's been negotiated would, if passed into law, be the toughest and fairest set of reforms to secure the border we've ever had in our country. It would give me as president a new emergency authority to shut down the border when it becomes overwhelmed. And if given that authority, I would use it the day I signed the bill into law, end quote. Now, who knows how these negotiations go? I'm keeping an open mind. But for Republicans to claim that they care so much about the border, to talk about how they want immediate action, and then to reject border a border security deal before it's even been released, is really kind of cynical. It's one of the most cynical things I think I've seen in all my time here. And then, and then, there's even a question of whether these useless messaging bills that are before us today actually make it to the floor. The far right voted down a rule a couple of weeks ago in retaliation for the funding deal that Speaker Johnson struck with the Democrats. That's the fifth rule this Congress that's gone down. Republicans used to waste time passing bills that had no chance in the Senate. Now they waste time trying to pass bills that, that they can't even pass in the House. So we don't pass laws up here anymore. We barely even pass rules. So maybe my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, maybe Mr. Roy or Mr. Norman, will, will tell us how they plan to vote on the rule, because if they're going to vote against the rule again, let's just save ourselves the time and not even bother with the rest of this hearing. And at the end of the day, the truth is that Republicans don't want to fix the border. House Democrats, Senate Democrats, President Biden, and now some, with, the, with the cooperation of Senate Republicans, you know, we have been ready and we've been willing to work together in a bipartisan way to solve this country's problems. Republicans apparently care more about making Trump happy than border security. What a shame. I yield back my time. It's coming soon, the hilarious Liar Liar starring a man who is obsessed with Hunter Biden's hard drive, the deep state, talking sheer shite to Hannity on Fox Entertainment. He lives to push his head right off the backside of former guy. Jim Jordan's path takes him down a corridor of lie, lie, lie. Coming soon, a movie with zero stars. Try and miss it.